Here's a look at some other handshakes that have also made history. Take a look. On the 13th of September 1993, after months of secret negotiations in Norway, Israeli Prime Minister Isaac Rabin and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat witnessed the signing of the Oslo Accords on the lawns of the White House. And in one of the most dramatic moments, with President Bill Clinton looking on, arms around both leaders, Arafat and Rabin shook hands, symbolizing a rare moment of hope in the bitter Arab-Israeli conflict. In June 2012, in a landmark moment in the Northern Ireland peace process, Britain's Queen Elizabeth II shook hands with Martin McGuinness, a former top commander of the Irish Republican Army, which had waged a bloody four-decade-long struggle against British rule. In December 2013, at a memorial service in South Africa for the late Nelson Mandela, U.S. President Barack Obama made headlines when he shook hands with Cuba's Raul Castro. This was the first such public greeting between leaders of two bitter neighbors. After decades of estrangement following a traumatic split at the end of China's civil war in 1949, the presidents of China and Taiwan met for the first time ever in Singapore in 2015. China's Xi Jinping and Taiwan's Ma Ying-jeou shook hands for more than a minute and even smiled before holding talks. The next major handshake on the global calendar is expected to feature Kim Jong-un again, but this time with US President Donald Trump. While it will certainly mark a historic moment, handshakes involving Trump sometimes make headlines for the wrong reason. The US president is well known for his awkward crapples. Most famously, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe last year appeared to roll his eyes in an apparent expression of relief after a long handshake with Trump in Washington DC. So how will Kim Jong Un react to Trump's iron grip like handshake? We are waiting to see. Bureau report, we on. We definitely are waiting to see how things pan out. We've got time for quick reactions, uh, closing comments from both uh, Ambassador Singh and Ramesh Ramachandran. Ambassador Singh, to you first. All in all, uh, a historic day. The outcomes, of course, still to be uh, measured in terms of what comes of it. So, historic day, a historic handshake, a historic hug. But as the brief report pointed out in the past, many of these handshakes have then ended up in failure. So, I think from here, the critical point would be. how they take forward the process step by step and how the other players mm -hmm. important players us russia china japan uh, feel that their stakes in the process are being affected that will be critical fair enough ramesh uh, to you well aisha i have a couple i want to pose a couple of questions would uh, kim jong un want to voluntarily give up his nuclear weapons what kim what would what will entail what will it take to get kim jong un to do that will he want to end up being a another uh, muammar gaddafi of libya also the fact that uh, even if he does uh, go will i mean even if he does go walk down that path what will the us and south korea meet him half way so these are all imponderables that need to be uh, given attention to and uh, one hopes that these issues will be addressed going forward at some point Absolutely. So big questions still hanging in the air, despite uh, the historic nature of what's happened today. We've seen a different side to North Korea for sure. Uh, you know, especially with the inclusion of Kim Jong Un's sister uh, at these uh, talks. Uh, it's been an interesting day overall. We'll have to leave it at that for now, gentlemen. Ambassador Singh, Ramesh Ramachandran, thank you both for uh, joining us this evening.